Given the decades of wisdom that has built up in the business world, investors, it sounds like you're saying, are making a big speculative bet if they're investing in your company's stock. Well, I think all internet companies, you know, the, vol the stocks are incredibly volatile. And I've, you know... But even long term. It, it, long term, I believe that it, it's very easy to predict that there are going to be lots of successful companies born of the internet. They're going to have very large market caps and, and, and so on. I also believe that today, where we sit, it's very hard to predict who those companies are going to be. Uh, so, you know, you can make bets on these things, and I think that Amazon.com, if we don't, if we're not one of those important, lasting companies born of the internet, we will have nobody to blame but ourselves, and that we will be extremely disappointed in ourselves. But there are no guarantees. Uh, it's very, very hard to predict. If you go back and look at the companies created by the PC revolution, uh, in 1980, you probably wouldn't have predicted the five winners, uh, you know, the five biggest winners. There have been lots of winners, actually. But I believe that if you can focus obsessively enough on customer experience, selection, ease of use, low prices, more information to make uh, purchase decisions with, if you can give customers all that, plus great customer service, it doesn't, I, I, it doesn't matter to me whether we're a pure internet player. What matters to me is do we provide the best customer service. Internet, schminternet, it's, that's, the, you know, that, that doesn't matter. Well, but it does matter to your investors to know whether they're investing in a company that No, they is should be investing in a company that obsesses over customer experience. In the long term, there is never any misalignment between customer interests and shareholder interests. Well, that's the same argument that uh, somebody at Walmart would make as well, wouldn't they? I, I don't see why not. I think they should make that argument. So... Uh, it's a correct argument. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
buy like Dogecoin on Robinhood and don't even know how the currency works, haven't transacted with it, don't have a, a wallet with it, don't understand what secures the network. I'm completely baffled at the underperformance of Bitcoin Cash compared to like these dog coins. And it's being pushed by a lot of people that haven't really used cryptocurrency. Like if you use cryptocurrency, you will find that Bitcoin Cash is like one of the most useful cryptocurrencies, if not the most useful cryptocurrency. And how the market is pricing it at an extremely low valuation compared to what it's giving other coins value to. So it really makes you scratch your head and can be almost frustrating at times. Even though I don't have a problem with these dog coins, I think it's fun to get more people in the market and start asking questions. Eventually, I think that capital will flow into more quality type investments. But I'll talk to people that are very new to crypto and like 90% of them have bought Doge, like retail loves Doge. And I think Shiba is falling to that same thing. And I just find it fascinating, and I just really find it hard to believe that in 20 years, these would be the cryptocurrencies that are quality coins, because I feel like it really lacks like an ideological vision of what it's gonna be and, and why it exists. Just like if you watch Jeff Bezos in that interview, how he's obsessive over the customer, like the company doesn't even care about the internet. It's an internet company, but it's all about how to create the best user experience for customers. So I think that may be something to be indicative when looking at cryptocurrency. What projects are being obsessive to an ideology and creating the best user experience? I do think there's several that, that really attempt to do this. And I think there's some that are falling short. And I try to evaluate Bitcoin Cash against this metric because I'm a big fan of Bitcoin Cash. And I do think it is a very strong ideological project. I think the project has held on to the white paper of being peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. And by being peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, being the best version of that, you know, being frictionless and building things on top of it. Like I think one of the best things in the whole crypto market that nobody talks about is the shareable link from Bitcoin.com where I can text anyone that doesn't even need to have a wallet, cryptocurrency, I can send them money anywhere in the world. I can do it through Instagram, WhatsApp, a text message, doesn't see a border, doesn't know anything. This money can travel anywhere in the world for a fraction of a penny and nobody can stop it. To me, that is such high value user experience. And when you actually use a currency, you're like, wow, this is extremely gonna be the future. So actually, I think I'll make a video on how to actually do this, like how easy it is to send cryptocurrency with Bitcoin Cash. I'll subscribe to the channel to see that video on how easy it is to use. I've sent so many people money using it, but I will uh, make a video here soon. But perhaps what could be the biggest downfall of Bitcoin Cash is, how disruptive it is. It came from the fabric of Bitcoin. It was a fork. But Bitcoin has pushed itself into this highly centralized payment system through the Lightning Network, through things like Strike or the Chivo wallet in El Salvador. I've tried the Moon wallet. I've had transactions fail on there. I did it with Mark Falzon. Bitcoin's adoption is coming by force of government. So they're like El Salvador is mandating citizens to use it on a custodian app. So it's looking like it was throttled in a way that can be sold to governments to make money and kind of farm their people of it, it really lost what it was. And I find it baffling that Bitcoiners are cheering on this notion of mandating currency. Like you have Peter McCormick, you know, standing up for this because you have Vitalik Buterin speak out against, like this isn't something we, sh we should really be proud of. We should actually like call this out. Like we should like Bitcoin and look into second layer solutions for it, but like mandating it, like how is everyone not calling this out and saying like this is, isn't what it should be? And Eric Voorhees had a very interesting tweet just saying like these aren't the Bitcoiners I grew up with. So it seems like that project's gone in a very status way and that can create several problems but it almost seems like genius central control like let's ruin this amazing technology of bitcoin so governments can keep power and bitcoin cash is still going to be this amazing tool for humanity that bitcoin was but we needed to almost destroy it to make sure it doesn't take over everything and let bitcoin be our throttled project on a one megabyte block that uh, everyone has to use these custodian apps. And in the short term, this is what's happening and, and it's what's affecting Bitcoin Cash. It's shedding off all these things that are trying to destroy it. So it shed off uh, BTC, wanted to be a throttled second layer system. It shed off uh, Craig Wright, wanting to cosplay as Satoshi and kind of go in his own world and have his own project to play up his whatever he wants to be. And then you had eCash fork off with uh, 
Amari Sajay, which was the, the founding uh, programmer for Bitcoin Cash. Uh, he wanted to create a developer fund. So he essentially wanted a paycheck. Every currency that was mined into existence, he wanted to capture 8% of that into his developer fund, which is not a decentralized system. Like Dash does this too. Cryptocurrency should have an ecosystem that invests in itself and improves the, the project, but it shouldn't be in a central way. So Bitcoin Cash uses something like Flipstarter, which people voluntarily propose their ideas to the market or the community and say, I wanna do this. If you can fund me, this can benefit the whole project. It's a very decentralized and voluntary system to benefit a, uh, a currency. And I find it completely fascinating. Uh, Bitcoin doesn't have this BTC. They have Blockstream that essentially controls the direction of the project. And it really makes Bitcoin Cash special, even though it's suffering. Uh, but I think in the long run, it is following on freedom fundamentals. Like I think the goal of humanity is, ever since like the Magna Carta, is to have more freedom. And the cryptocurrency and the blockchain and Bitcoin and what Bitcoin Cash is, is a tool for that. And I think in the long term, it can be that Amazon. Like Amazon in 1999 ran up to a very high valuation, then crashed for 10 years, went nowhere for 10 years. And then now it's the largest company in the world. It's a $3 trillion company. And I think this is what Bitcoin Cash may have to go through. It may not be the quickest way to get like massively rich. I think it'll do very well compared to like fiat currency, but the market's gonna be wacky and wonky. It'll pump dog coins. Uh, Bitcoin can be stolen by governments. It'll try proof of stake versus proof of work. There'll be all these experiments that are done, but the ones that focus the most on customer experience like Jeff Bezos and Amazon did will be the winner. And that'll be the one I wanna bet on. And customer experience, it needs to be frictionless, needs to be low cost, needs to be permissionless, needs to have fungibility, which Bitcoin Cash has privacy features through things like Cash Fusion. All these things make it superior money, and it's gonna take time for the market to find the best interest of it. Most of the world has not used uh, cryptocurrency, but yet if you look at the world that is using cryptocurrency, Bitcoin Cash ranks pretty high. I believe it is the most accepted cryptocurrency in the world, maybe Bitcoin in El Salvador now that they've mandated it, but Bitcoin Cash in a voluntary market, uh, by far, you know, has led the way in customer acceptance. And it has that blue chip quality. It has Grayscale investing into it. It's on PayPal's platform. And it does 100,000 transactions daily. It has launched Smart BCH on top of it, which makes it like an Ethereum-like platform that can be cheaper to build things on top than the gas fees that people face through Ethereum. So the fundamentals continue to grow strong and continue to add quality and weight to the investment. But what will the market do in the short term? How will it vote? How will it be euphoric? Uh, very hard to tell. I do think everything in this crypto bull market will run. I think Bitcoin Cash will go over $3,000 at some point, and then it'll crash back down, and we'll see what coins fall back in the top 10 after the mania is done, and everyone's done pumping coins. And you know, I think a lot of people in the Bitcoin Cash community will hold on to their crypto because they really use it, actually versus a lot of speculators in the market that are pumping coins up. But let me know in the comments, what coins do you think have the ability to be like the next Amazon or blue chip type investment? It's hard for me to have a conviction in many others. I do think Ethereum has those qualities as long as they can improve on their gas fees, which we'll see what proof of stake does. I'm curious to see what, what DOT does. I'm also curious to see what uh, Cardano does. It's a very theoretical project. They still need to make things happen. Uh, there's a lot of things still in the crypto sphere that, you know, we don't know, you know, we're, we're betting on these horses to, to create something in the market that people will find useful. Definitely the NFT market has come out of this cycle, which is amazing. The, the ability to tokenize your digital artwork, your music, and, and create commoditized value through the internet world is huge. So I do think the platforms that support that are gonna do extremely well, Solana. But there is more competition coming to this space. Like, like Smart BCH is a real thing that could take away a lot of market share being a decentralized platform and having low fees and allowing people to partake on the platform. But it's gonna take time. I am curious to know in the comments, what currencies do you actually use rather than just speculate on that you're seeing like real tangible value on in real world application? Are any of them dog coins? <laughs> coming to the end of the video, it's been a while since I sat down and made a video and gone and edited it. I've been so busy planning for this Bitcoin Cash golf tournament that went amazing. I wanna thank everyone that took place in it. The Bitcoin Cash podcast, 
If you watch this, thank you for your uh, support. Great food trading. I can't wait to go play golf with you. Thank you for your sponsorship. Uh, Roger Veer, thank you so much for guest speaking. Can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Mark Falzon, thank you for flying in to tell us about uh, what's going on in El Salvador. Uh, Lawrence Davis of Pantheon Financial, I really enjoyed your speech as well. Uh, these interviews are on my channel. I have more content coming out from the event. Uh, sorry I haven't got out more content recently. Uh, September was such a hectic month, you know, with the golf tournament, uh, with moving my business, with some personal issues that I had going on. It was very challenging, but I'm so excited to be back on here and talking about this future crypto world. <laughs> uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribed to the channel for future content and also tap that notification bell. It'll allow you to see more future content. Please follow me on Instagram. I post there pretty much daily, rgiffin89. I went on my longest hiatus of YouTube with just over a week, but I'm always on Instagram. It's very easy. I'm also always on noise.cash. You can follow me over there. Ryan Giffen 2 noise.cash is a Twitter-like platform where you can make free Bitcoin cash just by interacting with other people and hearting their comments. You can see how frictionless it is to send around Bitcoin cash and how micro tips work. I really encourage everyone to use that. And again, this is real world application for cryptocurrency. Where are you seeing it? And I think that could be a good indication of the currencies that are gonna hang around. And also I just encourage people to try to use cryptocurrencies in your daily lives. You'll have more education on it and feel more secure in where you're putting your capital and it'd be making the world a better place because the sooner we get cryptocurrencies the more the more capital can freely flow around the world and create more economic freedom for everyone and that will raise the standard of living for everyone create more technology that we all can benefit from increase life expectancy you name it uh, cryptocurrency will be an integral part of the future world by making the world a better place thank you guys so much for watching to the end and i'll be back next week with more content see you in my next one